I wanted to tell a story about 20 years ago when I went on a trip to Turkey and tried to find the tomb of King Nemrut on top of Nemrut Dagi Mountain. It's in the middle of Turkey. It took a long time to get there. It's, and all the postcards have it. But I went in the wrong time of year. And when the cab stuck, he pointed, he made a map in the snow, and we kept walking, walking, finally got to the top. And what happened up there changed my life. My mind went blank, and I don't really remember walking around. I don't remember that picture being taken. When we started coming off the mountain, I had this feeling that something was dropped into me, some answer. It was that the meaning of life is to experience life. And at first, it was this huge relief. I just out of college, I'm like, how am I going to change the world? What's my purpose? And it's like, oh, here's this get out of purpose free. Just experience life. And I'll admit, I got a little hidden and ketonistic. But 15 years ago, it brought me here. And then it brought me into gratitude and recalibrating and finding that place where when you truly just experience life and you're in the now, you're so blessed. We're in this planet, this fertile planet with so much amazing things. We're in this culture with so many gadgets and things and so much to do and so much to look at. And out here, it's this nice reminder of some of the things we take for granted on a daily basis like a shower. Most of us in our default world lives, we have this device. It's built in our houses. It shoots water out of the wall at whatever temperature we want. It can, you could drink it if you wanted to. In most of the world and in history, that would be a miracle. And most of us, some of us, spend that time thinking about all that sucks about what's going to happen in our day next. I don't say that to make you feel bad about the things that you have that are awesome. Because that doesn't do any good. It doesn't do any good to feel bad for the meal you have and think about the poor starving kid in China. The kid in China isn't going, oh, thank God that guy feels like shit as he's eating that sushi. <laughs> the world doesn't need people to do things because they feel bad. We need to find what makes us feel good and do that in the world. One of the neat things about this place is it tricks you with gifting. It tricks you into realizing how good it feels to do something amazing for somebody else. A tiny thing, a glass of water, holding the door open, a back massage. And when you start feeling those gifts, you realize oh, their joy brings me joy. And that idea of your, you know, follow your bliss, it's not this hedonistic statement. It's instructions from the divine. It's an instrument inside us in the same way that pain knows, oh, I shouldn't touch that. Pleasure makes me know that's how you reproduce. Joy helps you find your purpose. When you get excited, when you find your joy, what the previous talk was talking about. Now, when we sink into our joy, when we're passing that joy, when we're just experiencing, we're in a place of selfish service. We find ourselves doing things, not because we're trying to make the world a better place, but because it's simply what we're called to do. And then the world has no choice but to get better. And when you're able to live selfishly, making yourself happier, other people being happier from what you do, it changes everything. This target zone of how to make yourself happier that you've had your whole life, of get more, get more, get more, and when you've got a big TV and a small phone, what, where can you go? But when you realize there's billions of opportunities to give joy, then suddenly the person in front of you in line that forgot all their money and they don't have enough of their second item, instead of going, thank God that's not me, you go, oh, gifting opportunity. And then the gifts become more than just ice cream in the desert, art, it's not just in a special place one week. It's a daily ability to make yourself and others happy. 
And so I know we have responsibilities. We got jobs, we got people that we have mouths we have to feed. But if you can just spend a little bit of your energy following that joy, following that heart song, then when it comes time for your friends to write things about you in the temple, it will be a call to arms. It will be a song of inspiration and it will help others find their song. Thank you. I love you.